Hello there again, students. Uh, welcome to the third video in our series. Um, you can see that the other two videos are being processed right now, the introduction and the tools and layout, which you've already just watched. Um, and this video is going to end up being right here, the tips and tricks. Um, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks for taking the park test. Um, I've taken it myself. Um, it's been a few months since I've done it. Um, and I've also seen a few students um, take this in other schools um, as I was going around to other places. Um, so I do have some ideas of what's going to make this effective because um, there are some tricky things about navigating the test and um, things that are easy to miss. So I'm going to give you some tips. I'm going to go ahead and start over so I have a nice fresh test so you can see exactly what I would do. And when you take the practice test here in a little bit, I'm going to highly suggest that you get in this habit of doing all these little things. Um, I think you'll be very successful if you do. So I'm going to go ahead and click it and go in here. I'm going to put in my name. And I'm going to start the section. So let's say that I, it's Friday. I am now in my first session, the literary analysis. Um, I'm going to see probably you know 1 through 9 or 1 through 7 or something much shorter than 1 through 23. Um, I'm going to see my task up here. I'm going to go ahead and read this task and get an idea of what is going on with this test. So today you will analyze passages from two novels. Okay, um, This is actually probably going to be the case when you take the actual park. Um, you're going to be looking at two different texts. Okay, So I would highlight that. That's important. you got to remember that there are two texts that you're going to see throughout the course. As you read these texts, you will gather information and answer questions about the characters and points of view so you can write an analytical essay. Okay, well, so I know now what they want me focusing on when I read these two texts, and that's the characters and points of view. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that too. And then I know that after doing all this stuff and answering these questions, they're going to ask me to write an analytical essay. So I'm going to have to like analyze these two texts in an essay, show my thinking, and probably back it up with some, um, with some evidence. So automatically I'm going to highlight that. You're going to see that when I go on to part two, that goes away, but at least now I always have that. I can go back to question one. Um, and if you make that a habit, then it's something that you can always go back to um, to see. And now your brain is set up to know exactly what you need to be thinking about. So step one, highlight this, your task, what you're going to do throughout the, throughout the entire session. Now the next instinct a lot of students are going to have is to go directly to the questions or go directly and read the text. Um, I'm going to suggest that that's a bad idea and that there is a something, there's something else you're going to want to do first um, and it's going to help you in the long run. It's gonna, this is a time test. So you're going to have to be pretty quick. You're going to have to keep moving. What I would do is go to the final question. Well, in this case, it's question seven. So I'm going to go to question seven real quick. So the very first thing I do after I understand what they're asking me to do is go to the final question and look at what the final task is going to be. So here it is right here. In Confetti Girl and Tortilla Son, the narrators have points of view different from those of their parents. Write an essay. I'm going to highlight that. It's telling me what to do. Analyzing how these differences in points of view create tension in both stories. All right, so as the language arts teacher, when I read that, I already know which parts some students across the country are going to miss. They're going to focus more on this part, differences in points of view. But what they really want you to focus on is how the different points of view create tension. So that needs to be a big focus of your essay, how tension is created from the points of view in both stories. Remember to use details from both texts to support your ideas. So as I, now I know that as I'm reading, I want to be looking for how tension is created because of the point of view of the two characters in this story. Okay? So, that's step one and two. Highlight the task and then go look at your big essay task, the big writing project, because you will have a writing assignment at the, each of the three sessions that you do, guaranteed every time. Um, so, the next thing I would do is I would not start answering these questions yet. I would just read the first text that they offer. So um, I would go ahead. I would just kind of sit back, relax, read this. I would be keeping this characters, this points of view, this tension thing in my mind. 
Um, and as I'm reading, now, now it's almost like you're annotating the outsiders. You know the types of things you're looking for. And now you can use the highlight feature to highlight. So if let's say if this is something point shows the points, the point of view creating tension, you could highlight that as like possible textual evidence to use. And you're like, oh yeah, this, this also this also works too. Now I'm just highlighting random stuff now. Um, but when you come back to question one, you can see all that textual evidence that you've gathered. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and read. Now, another thing that I've seen another teacher suggest, and I actually think this is pretty wise, is every time you go to a new question, take a quick moment and highlight the text that they want you to focus on. Because you're going to see that when you get into question, I think it's three or four on this test, so we're still on Confetti Girl, all of a sudden, question three, we're now on Tortilla Sun. And if you don't realize that, depending on what the question is over here, that could be tricky. So every time you go to a new question, just highlight real quick, bam, okay, now I know what I'm reading. And every time you go back to a different question, you can see what you've highlighted, okay? So if we're on question one, now what I've done is I've highlighted this, and by the way, this is, I'm, this is taking way longer than it'll take you on the actual test. But you're highlighting this, you go, you look at your final question to see what the essay is going to be about, you come back, you read, you highlight. Now it's time to start answering these questions. Okay. Um, I told you in part two kind of how these questions work. Um, in general, it's kind of thought of, thought by teachers um, in Colorado that the first question for literary analysis will always be some sort of vocabulary question. So they're going to ask you to like go look at a specific paragraph and answer. So this is context clues. Answer a question about vocabulary using um, using how it's used in the story. Then they'll ask you to provide some other textual evidence to back that up. Okay, so then I'm going to go through, I'm going to take this test. I'm going to be answering all these questions. I'm going to use my notepad if need be. Now my note, notepad could also be a place to record thinking. So let's say on question two, based off of whatever they ask you here, you're like, oh, um, this is something about, re reveal about her attitude. That's probably going to be dealing with the tension that they're, that's being created with her point of view. Um, but let's say I have this really cool thought and I'm like, oh man, I, I want to use that in my essay. I can open up the notepad and type in that really cool thought that you have um, in this box right here. Um, then you can come back to it later. You can use your review and see, oh, I guess that's the other important thing, is if you do want to use that feature, you do want to use the notepad, you're going to want to, um, you're going to, want to click the flag button to remind yourself to come back to that, that question. Okay. Um, so I would flag this because I have a note in here. Then when I go to my review section, I can see all the questions that I flagged where I might have written down a really profound thought. I could see some people using that feature and some people not. Um, so I would go through, I would be answering these questions. Um, let me show you a couple of these other types here. So you can see this is number three. It says selecting from paragraphs 32 to 39, choose the paragraph that most directly reinforces the tone created in paragraph 35. So I'm going to scroll down to 35. I'm going to read 35, and you can see, to make it easy on you, they've highlighted your possible choices. So you read this, you choose the tone, and then all you got to do is bam, do that, and you've answered the question once it's highlighted yellow. You can move on to the next one. Um, there are other types of questions. Let's see here. Yes, here's the other type. Um, these are drag and drop questions. Now, if you're on a Chromebook, I could see this being a little clunky. Those of you who get to use a PC um, on the actual testing day, this is probably going to be easier. But it tells you to select details from the passage that are most relevant to providing an objective summary of the passage. So basically, they're saying which three little passages, if you put them together, would actually sort of summarize this entire passage that you read. So let's say you're like, oh, this one would do it first. 
And then this one would be second. By the way, you'd want to put these in um, in the correct order. And then so on and so forth. Let's find another blue one. Oh, there we go. Yes, these are probably totally incorrect, but you can kind of see how that works. And if you're like, ah, actually, I don't think that works anymore, you can deselect it. Or, well, no, I thought you used to be able to move them around, but you can't. So if you wanted to move this one down to here, you'd have to exit out of it, go find it again, and move it down to that B. Okay. So now here I go. I'm taking the test. Now, here's another really important th thing to think about. Um, when I took this test, I realized when I got to number seven that I almost didn't even need to use the, the two texts that they provided here. I didn't need to use these versions of it because I had highlighted some things in other um, parts of the test. I had flagged it appropriately. And even more importantly, Park is kind of nice because all the questions they asked you or most of the questions they asked you had to do with tone or had to do with point of view or had to do with the attitude of the character. So what they were doing is they were asking you questions that would guide your thinking for the essay in the first, point, first place. So when I wrote my essay, I actually went back and found the bits of textual evidence that I had used here and I used those to formulate my ideas um, and to provide textual evidence for number seven. So at the end of the day, by the time I had taken questions one through six, I got here, I had a pretty solid idea because I knew what I was doing, because I knew that this is what they wanted me to do. I had a pretty solid idea what I was going to say in my essay, and I could just bang it out, bam, bam, bam. Okay. So finally, when you get to this essay, What's the right way to do this? Well, you have a really small window. There's no spell check. You can type an at, uh, lowercase i. It doesn't put a red squiggly. It doesn't automatically capitalize it, so that's good to think about. It doesn't let you tab, so I'm going to hit tab. And you can see it just took the cursor away and put it somewhere else on the test. Um, you can't indent. Um, so what I would recommend for indenting is one of two things. You can either hit space about five times and then start typing. And then when you get to, let's just do this real quick so you can see what this looks like. Okay. Then you get to a new paragraph, bam, like that. The other option would be to just start typing here. And then when you get to a new paragraph, just space it twice so there's a space between each paragraph. Either way is going to be perfectly fine. Okay. Um, when you do write these essays, I would recommend you do a little bit of planning. Uh, get your complex ideas formulated. Now what you can use is this feature here, the notepad. Uh, the way I used it when I wrote my essay was I would drag it right around in here um, so that I could see what the task was. I could see my box where I was going to eventually be typing. I could see my notes, and I could also see the text and access the text. So all these things are accessible in one spot. Okay, I do have to scroll down to make that happen a little bit. You can see it gets kind of funky there. On um, Chromebooks, it'll probably be even funkier. But um, now I'm going to do just a quick little outline. What I would do is I would start with, okay, what's my thesis? What am I going to prove about um, how tension is created? Um, then, so I would type that in. Then I would go on and start thinking about, okay, what are my body paragraphs going to be? Well, like I said, you want a minimum of four paragraphs per essay. This one pretty nicely turns into four. Um, so let's just say here we're looking at the tension in two different texts. So if I wanted to do four paragraphs, I would first talk about how tension is created in Confetti Girl. Then I would talk about how tension is created in Tortilla Sun based on the points of view of the two characters. I can do that separately. I don't have to compare and contrast. Well, let's say I wanted to add a compare, comparison analysis paragraph later. I could do that. But let's just say my first body paragraph would be about um, the tension in Confetti Girl. And in this, I'm, gonna be, I'm trying to go quick, so I'm not going to type a bunch of stuff out. 
Um, and then my next body paragraph would be about the tension in tortilla sun. Then if I have time, I might have like a analysis paragraph that an that uh, compares the two. Um, so I'm gonna say a comparison analysis. It the prompt doesn't ask you to do that, but as long as you appropriately do what the prompt asks here, you can add this and it shows that you have deeper analysis skills. Then I've got a conclusion. So what I've actually planned here is a five paragraph essay. This is just sort of the shell for my first body paragraph. Here I'm going to talk about how the tension is created in Confetti Girl. I'm going to provide some textual evidence. Most likely I can go to questions one, two, and three um, and see some of the textual evidence that was used there uh, for my answers. Then I'm going to talk about the tension created in Tortilla Sun. Then I'm going to write a comparison where I compare the two. I'm going to even contrast the two. Um, then I'm going to write my conclusion, concluding paragraph. Okay. Now this could be my plan right here. Depending on the type of writer you are, that could be your plan. Or you could be like, oh, I know there's a quote on question number three that I want to use. And I also know that there is um, a comment that I put um, in the notes on question number five. Um, and then I know here that question number one has some great textual evidence. Um, and then I could compare something using question number six because they asked me to do that in number six. So then this becomes a very quick little outline for you to make sure you get all your ideas together. I would make this pretty quick. When I did it, I didn't spend a ton of time here. I just got a quick little layout. And then I used what I knew about writing and started typing. Um, it's a good idea, if you can, to use parenthetical citations when possible. Um, so a parenthetical citation is where you are in parentheses at the end of a quote, um, signifying where it came from. Now, you don't have page numbers here. You have paragraph numbers. So what that would look like is, let's just say, um, I'm going to use this quote here. Uh, I duct as a piece of tile. Um, so I'm going I'm to go when the narrator um, said that she ducked a piece well, ducked as a piece of tile. Let's just say that's the end of my quote. I'll end my quotations. I'll put a space. In parentheses, I'm going to put P-A-R-A, -A, period, and the number, two. Bam. Now, as long as the your reader knows that you're talking about Tortilla Sun, then you're going to be set. Then you put your period there, and there you have it. Um, that's how you would do that. Okay. So, remember, these are time tests. You're going to want to be paying attention to the time as you go through this. Um, but in general, that is how you take PARC. Those are my suggestions for you. Um, you're going to see that as you go on to the next questions, everything is formatted exactly the same. Um, I think on question 17, it's worth pointing out. So this is the um, research simulation. You actually have three texts that you have to compare. And they, this is an essay that asks you actually to compare. Um, so. Um, with that said, that's all I have for you. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you can now take this test successfully. I want you to practice the tests using, and you're going to record the answers that you put down using the sheets that I gave you already. Um, and I want you to practice using all these features because if you practice using them now, you're going to use them on Friday, Monday, and Tuesday, and you're going to be much more successful. So thank you and good luck.